As a homeowner, I protect my house by keeping the doors locked. I keep privacy by keeping the shades pulled. Do I ever let anyone in? Of course. I even give keys to trusted friends. As a business owner, you can think of your company resources like a house. You want to give your employees access while keeping the network private, no matter where they go. A client-to-site virtual private network, or VPN, can provide both. There are many VPN software options. In this episode of Cisco Tech Talk, I'll show you how to create a client-to-site LTTP VPN using the RV340 in Windows built-in client. I'll start out by accessing the router and navigate to VPN and then IPsec profiles. I'll go ahead and click on the plus icon to add. Next, I'll enter a profile name. For phase one options, I'll change the authentication to SHA-1 and SA lifetime to 86,400. These settings are what is required by Windows requirements for its built-in client VPN. For phase two options, I'll change the authentication to SHA-1 and SA lifetime to 28,800. I'll disable perfect forward secrecy. This is because if it's enabled, it will not connect. Windows built-in VPN has its own settings that we need to match. Next, I'll create a user group for my VPN. To do this, I'll navigate to System Configuration and then User Groups. I'll click on the plus icon to add. I'll enter a group name and click Apply. The next step is to create user accounts. I'll click on User Accounts and click Add. I'll enter a username and a password. These will be the credentials used to log into the VPN. For Group, I'll select the group I created earlier and click Apply. I also want to make sure I'm authenticating using the local database. This way, I can use the account I created to log in. To do this, I'll scroll down to LTTP, which stands for Layer 2 Tunneling Protocol. I'll make sure to choose Local Database. I'll make sure my change is saved. If LTTP is not set to Local Database, try again. I'll click Apply and save the changes I made. Next, I'll navigate to VPN and then LTTP server. I'll turn on the LTTP server and leave MTU as is. This is the max transmit unit and is usually left at default. For address pool, I must choose an IP range that is different from both my RV340 private network as well as my client's private network. For user authentication, I'll add the group I created earlier and will also remove the admin group. For IPsec, I'll select on and choose the IPsec profile I created earlier. I'll enter a pre-shared key. I'll also add the DNS servers. The first one is that of RV340, and the second DNS server that I'm adding in this example is a known Google DNS server. I'll click Apply. Next, I'll save the changes by clicking Administration and Configuration Management. Then I'll click Apply. This looks good. Now it's time to configure my Windows VPN client. I'll search for VPN, choose VPN, and then Settings. I'll click on Add a VPN Connection. I'm gonna choose Windows Built-in as the VPN provider. I'll enter a connection name and enter the public IP address of the router. If you're using dynamic DNS, you can enter it here. For VPN type, I'll choose LTTP IPsec with pre-shared key from the drop-down menu and enter the pre-shared key. I'll choose username and password as the type of sign-in info and click Save. Next, I'll click on Change Adapter Options. I'll choose the VPN adapter option I just created. I'm going to right-click and choose Properties. I'll click on Security. I'll need to click on Allow These Protocols and remove the Microsoft Chat version. Currently, this is a Windows requirement, and it will not connect if it's not set to this option. I'll click on the Unencrypted Password option and click OK. This looks good. I can now exit from these settings and connect to the VPN. 
The sign-in option will appear where I'll enter a username and password. Yes, my VPN is now connected. When you set up your own VPN and don't have any connectivity, there are a few things to keep in mind. First, if you have a public IP address on your WAN port, it should be a static IP address. If it's a dynamic IP address, the VPN will disconnect when your public IP address changes. You can add a dynamic DNS to the RV340 router to fix this issue, or you can add a static IP address to the WAN. Also, if you are double NATed or if your WAN is a private IP address, you will need to port forward port 45 through 100 and 500 to the RV340 router for the VPN to connect. That's it. My network is set up with LTTP VPN on my RV340 router using Windows built-in client VPN. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.